for the first night, one of the biggest aspects of nikah is to basically consummate the marriage, right? Because that's a desire that husband and wife have, and this is the halal way of fulfilling that. So there's a, some people may feel that there's an urgency to do this. However, it is not a sunnah necessarily that on the first night that this must take place. And that, that's why you have to be sensitive. Because it's possible that, you know, these last few days or weeks have been very, very busy for the couple. Right? Of course, once they are married, there's going to be a lot of enthusiasm. But a lot of the time, people are tired or whatever the case is. So all we're saying is proceed carefully, relax, get to know one another. Especially if you've done it in a halal way, where you've not basically had a taste of one another beforehand. Because unfortunately, there's a lot of cases where people get to know one another too much and they've been dating and they've done basically everything that what you're supposed to be look forward, looking forward to for your day of marriage, all that barakah is gone, right? So really, if it's a, a couple who've been trying to be righteous and so on, there's going to be an urgency, there's going to be a barakah and so on. Um, you want to try to break the ice, right? You want to try to break the ice, get comfortable with one another. And generally, if you've done your due diligence, if you found somebody who you think is compatible, you've made the inquiries, you've tried to understand the personality through other people and so on, and you've made a bit of investment like that, that then basically, once the nikah has been done, husband and wife become halal for one another. One of the things that you should avoid is you should not be playing hard to get. Otherwise, it could leave a lasting negative impression on the other. So if the husband just plays hard to get, or the wife plays hard to get, it's just not, you're, you're halal for one another, you should basically be both giving it your full. Generally, the advice is women should not play hard to get, and men should take it easy. Because generally, those are the problems. Right? Obviously, when somebody is still a relative stranger, you may be a bit uncomfortable how far we can go, and so on. It's also possible that you may not know that the other person has had abusive upbringing. They've suffered abuse, sexual abuse or other kind of abuse and they may have psychological problems. So many marriages are, can be like that. Where, so you have to be careful. You have to help in that situation. And of course, there's the natural inhibition, the natural haya that somebody has. You don't expect on the first day just to reveal it all, as they say, right? There could be a natural inhibition or a reservation at this stage. So you need to take it uh, feeling insecure and so on. So start praising one another. Praise them. Ease, make it easy for them. Make it comfortable for them. A uh, situation basically just needs care and compassion. Uh, understanding and patience. The focus initially should be a more of a psychological bonding. Developing confidence and setting down, nurturing the spiritual foundations of this spiritual union, of this important union, the spiritual foundations. Okay, these are specific sunnah recommendations for this night. And I think it helps to ease the couple uh, to a consummation as well. There's a hadith related by Imam Tabarani which says that the couple should offer two rakats of prayer together in congregation. So when you come together, whether you're going to a hotel room or your own apartment or your friend's apartment or whatever, however you want to do this the first night, right? You first get together, do wudu, and you pray salat. Um, of course, the wife may not be in a position to pray salat at that time. If she's on a monthly period or whatever, then the husband prays. She does some tasbih or whatever. Number two, then the husband is also advised to hold the wife's forelock, which is the, the hair at the front, and recite the following prayer. The wife can also make this du'a. But because the Prophet is speaking to men, he said it to her, he said, Allahumma inni asaluka khayraha, and she would say khayrahu instead, right? Wa khayra ma jabaltaha alayhi. Wa a'udhu bika min sharriha, wa sharri ma jabaltaha alayhi. And if she's reading it, she'll just change the ha to hu instead, which is the masculine from the feminine. Basically, it just means, oh Allah, I ask you for the good in her or him, and the good you have predisposed her to, or him. And I seek your protection from her evil, or his evil, and the evil you have predisposed her or him to. 
So you're asking for the best. And this, this dua you do in so many places. In fact, that's the dua I made when I went first day to university. Oh Allah, I ask you for the best of this place and that it's been created for. And I seek refuge from the worst of this place and the worst that may be there. You say that for the wind. When the wind blows, oh Allah, give us the best of it, not the worst of it. This is a general dua you can make in all cases. But this one is definitely here related by Imam Abu Dawood. This should inshallah keep the shaitan away. And protect you from any ill that may come about. Number three, it could be a recommendation at this point to give a special gift. This is when I think, this is when I think the marital gift should be given. Not mahar, but a special private personal gift. There are these gifts that you have to exchange rings and all that. Those are all formalities, right? I don't know how serious people take them, but they are ritualistic. This is the real way. Nobody else knows what you're giving. It's just between you and her or you and him. Some, and preferably give something that they will remember forever. Right? A box of chocolates will be eaten up. Right? A box of baklava, a box of, uh, you know, uh, give something like a ring or something. Huh? A book, a, a, a special book like the, the handbook of a healthy Muslim marriage. <laughs> right? It's a good idea. Actually, a dua book. Right? al hizbul Adam. Um... A nice Qur'an, right? A nice Qur'an, something, whatever, just something to remember forever, right? Generally, it's, it, otherwise it's not necessary, but it's just good. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, Tahaddaw tahabu. Give gifts to one another, and that will create love. And this is the person you want to create love with. So use everything that the Prophet ﷺ has encouraged to create love with. Now, if, if you're already married and you didn't do this, you can still have a special night and say, let's do this again, let me give you a gift. Okay. Just organize with your spouse that you know what we didn't do this properly. Let's do this all of this sunnah. There's nothing wrong with doing. Let's set a date next week on Sunday. We're going to do all of this or Friday. Yeah, Friday night, Saturday. Yes. The the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Yes, that hadith is related by Imam Tabarani and others, and Bukhari is Allah double mufrad. Number four. This is from the sunnah. The husband could also offer his new bride something to drink. A nice juice or something, or anything, even water. This is found in a hadith of Asma bint Yazid ibn Sakan radiallahu anha, who said that she was the one who beautified Aisha radiallahu anha for the Prophet sallallahu You know, you get the women in the community who does the bride up, right? The the makeup people or whatever you want to call them. So Asma bint Yazid, she said that I beautified Aisha radiallahu anha for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then called him to come and to see her unveiled. Remember, they got he only saw, uh, he, he got he started living there three years afterwards in Mecca in Medina Munawwara. So she was beautified for him, and then he was invited to come and now see your bride unveiled because until now is with the veil, right? He came and sat next to her, and he brought a large cup of milk from which he drank. So preferably milk then, some good milk, some good nice organic milk, right? He then offered it to Aisha radiallahu anha, but she lowered her head and felt shy. She was very shy. Right? Asma radiallahu anha says that I scolded her, like I told her off, and I said to her, take from the hand of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So then she took it and she drank some. So if you do have a bride that is maybe a bit shy or extra shy, whatever, then her mother or somebody can be there to help her along, you know, in the initial meeting. Beautiful sunnah. Okay, number f- number five. This is where nobody else should be there. Afterwards, obviously, because if they decide to get intimate and make love, the couple then should first recite the dua of this. Special dua which is Bismillah. Allahumma jannibna shaitan wa jannibi shaitan ma razaqtana. You should memorize this dua. Because it's to be re- recited every time the sexual intercourse takes place. It is very important because remember, this is all about the big idea of marriage, which is to produce children and the next generation. And you want to make sure you, pr- you, you, you do everything right to produce the best children. And part of that is finding the right spouse in the first place. And then when you do, then you want to make sure shaitan doesn't take, because shaitan is there to mess it up. Shaitan is there to cause problems right from the beginning. So what this dua means is in the name of Allah. Oh Allah, distance us from, this, uh, from the Satan. And distance Satan from what you have granted us. 
So we don't want our child to be affected by the shaitan as well. And the Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith of Bukhari and Muslim that if the couple were to be, uh, if you read this and the couple were to be blessed with a child during such a relationship, then Satan will not be able to harm it.